Hallo und wie geht's? Es geht mir sehr gut. Today we're going to talk about the imperative or simply we just call them commands. So what is a command? Let's start there. A command is um, whenever you say something to make somebody else do something. So an example of that would be run, stop, jump. Okay, what makes them so special? So we have the same thing in English as they do in German. So if you notice whenever I say run, stop, jump, there's no subject there, right? We have the implied subject of you, right? So I'm talking directly to someone. I am basically saying you stop, you run, you jump, but we typically don't add in that you, okay? And it's gonna be the same thing when we're doing this in German. But there's something that makes it just a little bit different. And that's when we have to think about all of those different ways to say you in German. What are those different ways? I'm gonna give you a second to think about that. Great, so hopefully you came up with these three different ways to say you. So I wanna talk about them real quick because you're gonna be using them and why they're different. So why are there three different use in German? Okay, so the first one we have right here, it's hard for me to point at these, is do. Okay, so do we're gonna talk, we're gonna use do whenever it's singular. So the person that we're talking to is one person. Okay, and also when it's an informal situation, situation, okay? So I normally wouldn't talk to a friend, a family member, or a child formally. I'm gonna talk to them informally because we have a relationship, but also with a child, um, they have no authority over you. So it's not gonna be formal. That's gonna be informal as well. So again, do is when it's singular. So it's one person and when it's informal. So mostly we're gonna talk about friends, family. If we are um, commanding a child to do something, we would also use do, okay? The next one is ear and ear is especially simple, I feel like for us Southerners because it basically means y'all. Okay, so it's the same idea that it's informal. Okay, so it's still gonna be friends, family, and children. However, it's plural. Okay, so that means that it has to be a group. Okay, so at least two, two or more. So two friends, two family members, a group of kids that you're telling them to stop running probably. Okay, um, so I wanna give you an example real quick. So for do, someone that I would command with do would be my little sister. Okay, or my best friend, Kara. Um, with ear, I could command two of my little sisters together to do something, or a group of friends. So it could be my friends, Kara, Sophie, and Maria, okay? And then we have Z, okay? And Z is something that we don't really use in English. We have a different way of using the formal. Um, so, but it is formal, but it can also be singular or plural. And that's something that we have to keep in mind, okay? Um, so when is it gonna be formal? So if I'm commanding a stranger, right? So if you see a stranger on the street, there's a car coming at them, you might yell at them, move, okay? You would use C, because you don't know this person. Um, someone who's older than you, that you don't know yet. So an older stranger, um, your teacher, Right, so if I'm maybe going over something too quickly, you could ask me to repeat, right? You could say, wiederholen Sie Frau Cuebes, and I would repeat for you, okay? Um, also, people of authority. Now, Z is a little bit special, though, because typically it would be considered rude if you were to command somebody just using Z. You would also want to add in bitte, which is kind of like saying, please repeat that for me. Okay, so it could be a single person, but it could also be a group of those people, right? So if there's a group of strangers and a car's coming at them, you can command all of them formally with Z, okay? Now let's talk about each of them separately and how to make a command. All right, so we're gonna start talking about do, okay? So just to review what we just talked about, do, who am I gonna be commanding with do, okay? It's gonna be one friend, one family member or one child, okay? So my example here is gonna be my friend, Kara. Okay, I'm gonna command her to do something. Okay, how am I gonna form that, all right? So how is it different than a regular sentence? The difference is that it has no subject, okay? So just like in those English examples I gave you when I say run or I say stop, there's no subject there. It's gonna be the exact same in German. 
All right. With the do though, one special thing with do is that we're going to take off our verb ending. Okay, so the st is the normal verb ending. We're just going to get rid of it. We're going to be ba left with basically just the stem. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example. So here's a sentence. Okay, do moxed dein bet. Right, so this is just me observing. You know, I can be like, oh, you're making your bed, or you do make your bed, don't you? Right, it's just a general statement. All right, but maybe I go over to my friend Kara's house for a sleepover, and I'm very pretentious, I'm a snob, and she hasn't made her bed that day, and it kind of makes me upset. So I'm gonna order her to make her bed so that everything looks nice whenever I'm there, right? So I'm gonna say, mach dein bet right? Make your bed, okay? Um, so if you notice, right, I took off this do, it's no longer there, right? I'm just starting with mock. Also with my verb, this is hard to point out, with my verb, I took off the st, okay? See that? There's no subject and there's no verb ending, all right? So that's how we're going to make those do commands. All right, so now let's talk about commands with ear, right? So just to review, who are we commanding? So it's the same people as with do, so it's someone who's informal, it's friends, family, children, um, but it has to be multiples of them, so it has to be a group. So in this case, I'm gonna command my friend Kara and her sister Sophie, okay? Um, so how are we gonna do that? So again, we have no subject, right? So our ear will just drop off, but we're actually gonna keep the ending with these ones, all right? So it's gonna look like a regular sentence just without your your ear, okay? So let's look at the example. So we've got ear macht eure bed, bet, sorry. Um, just a regular sentence. So y'all make your bed. Maybe they do that every day, I don't know. Um, and then whenever we make the command, we just don't have the ear, right? So we have macht eure bet. All right, so now we're gonna talk about Z. So just to remind you um, who you're gonna order with this one, um, it's gonna be formal. Um, so you want to think about strangers, elders, people of authority, um, and that can either be a single person or a group of those people. So our example is going to be me, Frau Cuevas, all right, because I am your teacher, person of authority, so you're going to refer to me with Z, okay? Um, so how are we going to do that? This one's a little bit different because we're going to keep the subject, we're going to keep the ending, and then we're going to switch our subject and verb, all right? So your verb's going to come first, then your subject. All right, so let's look at the example. So um, we have Sie machen ihr Bett, okay, so this is just you guys, maybe you see in the back of my videos or something that I've made my bed, right? You make your bed, okay? Maybe it's not made, and y'all are kind of disgusted with me because I'm apparently a pig. Um, so then you are going to command me to do that. You're going to say, make your bed. So you're just going to switch the order of these two to machen Sie ihr Bett. So I hope that this video was helpful for you. Um, there's also a written explanation. You can also always email me. Um, so thank you for tuning in and listening to me. Ich wünsche Ihnen einen schönen Tag. Bis später.